Many thanks to Skillshare, the generous sponsors of this video. Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography and today I'm back in the Snowdonia Mountains and I'm climbing the flank of the Glidderai. It's a lovely, warm, still Sunday morning, about 7 a.m. and I've parked down the bottom there at Kapil Kirig and I'm climbing the flank of the Glidderai from the opposite end that most people start. Uh, usually you park up in Ogwid Valley and climb up to the main peaks. My aim today is a peak called Avoil Gorch, which should give me hopefully some decent views. Now that said, it could be problematic because there is quite a lot of low cloud about, so it'll be interesting to see how it works out today. I've been walking for about uh, two hours, um, luckily taking some pictures along the way because as you can see, the cloud base has dropped quite considerably and even though I've got a good way to go yet before I get to the summit that I'm heading for, um, this clag came down about half an hour ago and it's not showing any signs at all of blowing through. So uh, I'm still going to head on up to the summit that I decided I was going to head up to and we'll see what happens, but whether or not there'll be any more photography, not sure. The thing about it is, of course, when you get mist down at, at sort of sensible elevations, the first thing a landscape photographer does is grab his camera and head out, especially if you've got some woodland nearby. The problem in the mountains is it, it's always really thick um, and it, it doesn't, unless you're using cloud formations um, around a peak or something like this, just being in the middle of it is no help at all. There's, it's a pretty featureless landscape, as you can see around me. There's one or two boulders and that sort of thing, but certainly nothing that's gonna make a photograph. Now I'm up at uh, 800 meters and I've got really lucky. The peak that I was heading for uh, has cleared up a little bit. The cloud base has lifted slightly. However, one of my targets just over there is Travan. And of course, 
you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is hang out for a while here, have a pit stop and wait it out, see if anything happens. My other target for today was the Snowden horseshoe and can't see any of that either. Now, um, that doesn't matter. I had a fabulous hike up, really enjoying myself here. Um, and I can totally recommend this location. It's about a four mile hike up from Kapil Kirig, but the big advantage of this time of year coming up here is that uh, there's nobody else. I haven't seen a single other person. This morning when I came along the Ogwin Valley about 6 a.m., it was already really busy around the parking areas by the lake. So if you want to come and have a bit of peace and quiet and you still want to enjoy some photography, pick a better day, but you'll struggle to pick a better location. Now, when Skillshare got in touch and said, would I be interested in them sponsoring a video? I was really flattered because I've been a premium member of Skillshare for quite some time. It's great value for money and you get access to thousands of creative classes. Now, a Skillshare membership means that you've got full access to everything they have to offer. All sorts of really interesting and creative skills. Of course, photography and video production. I'm currently taking a class by Thomas Frank in uh, media productivity. It's really interesting. Plus, you get to interact with other people taking the class and the tutor. But there are topics ranging from fine art and music to technical skills like web development and UX design. So there's bound to be something there that you'll find interesting. And the first 1,000 people who use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial to Skillshare. Well, I've been sat up here now for probably 45 minutes, maybe, thinking about calling it a day because even though I've still got a clear mountain top to sit on, all the things that I was looking to shoot today are still clagged up. I have had, as I look across towards Travan and Penarolwen, just one or two breaks in the clouds and a little splash of light here and there, which I've just reacted to really quickly with a hand held. But looking across towards the Snowden horseshoe, it hasn't put in an appearance at all. I really don't think it's likely to. So um, let me just tell you a little bit about where I am though, because um, I don't want to sound too down in the dumps. It is a fabulous place to spend a, a summer's day. Um, first thing about it is that by picking this particular route, even though I'm right in the heart of the mountains with all of the, the honeypot locations available to me as photographic subjects under normal circumstances, I haven't seen a single other person. It's such a quiet, secluded area, and I can highly recommend it. I'm only about four miles out of Kapil Kirig, uh, um, and at 800 meters, you've still got some really nice, spectacular views to enjoy. Another lucky break today is that I decided to travel particularly light. Um, recently, uh, all of my video work has been done on this EM3 uh, with a, a full-size gimbal, uh, and it's pretty heavy stuff. And I just thought, I'm gonna sprint up here as quick as I can. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but I decided I'd travel light today. So my entire kit is uh, only 18 pounds, and that includes the obligatory two liters of water. So I'm shooting video on my Osmo Pocket with my iPhone, and I'm using this for my stills work today. I've paired it up with a 14 to 150 lens. Now I do have a 12 to 100 Pro lens, and to be honest with you, I've been using it very little over the last six to nine months. It doesn't often put in an appearance unless I'm just popping down to a local beach for an evening. This little lens here, uh, it gives me a better telephoto range running out to 150 millimeters. Uh, it only weighs 280 grams. So when I pair it with this little body, which has innards the same as the EM1 Mark II, so I'm not losing out at all on the sensor or the processor, um, it weighs nothing. It's so handy. Um, and 
carrying it on my shoulder clip means that I can still grab a half decent image every now and then. Um, the other lens weighs 560 grams, so that's literally twice the weight of this. I haven't brought any other glass with me at all. I've just got a small pouch with uh, some filters and spare battery. That's it. And had I found myself setting up any photography today and talking you through a shot or two, I don't feel at all that I would be missing out by using such a, a lightweight uh, set of equipment. The most important thing for landscape photography for me, as far as mountain work goes, is actually getting up here in the first place and making it a pleasurable experience. Lugging my gimbal and all the other stuff up with me sometimes is less than pleasurable. And over the last few years, my kit has seemed to get heavier than it really warrants. Yeah, this really isn't working out at all. Every so often, the, the two stones, Adam and Eve, on the summit of Treven just appear through the clouds as they're blowing through. Uh, and I'm trying to get a close-up shot with the whole flank of the mountain underneath it. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, I might have got it. I've been sat here for an hour waiting for that shot. The rock is really spectacular. It's really quite bright. Uh, it's a very pale rock. Um, and so I've got a wisp of cloud just sitting underneath Adam and Eve, which are the, the two stones. And if there's any light at all, that rock really catches the light. But the, the two stones on the summit are, uh, are quite dark and they're silhouetted. I don't know. You might get to see that image. You might not. I'm thinking about heading off. There's certainly no point in setting the tripod up because if I did, by the time I got a shot lined up, it's all over. There's nothing to see. Now, before I go, let me just talk you through how I've got this set up uh, for the handheld work that I do as I'm hiking along. The thing about mountain photography, particularly in light like this, uh, and this is pretty standard for the mountains. It's quite common sort of conditions that you might experience if you come to visit. So um, what I tend to do is as I head out, the first thing I do is, is I dial in an ISO that will get me a shutter speed of about 320th to a 400th of a second. The light overall doesn't really change much. Uh, on a day like this that you get the odd splash of bright light on a flank of a mountain but by and large um, the overall lighting conditions are pretty standard so it's not going to change much as I go along so what I'll tend to do is just save those settings uh, on a custom setting so when I switch the camera on it's ready to go so I'm going to dial in uh, f5.6 for my aperture ISO 400 uh, although today it is actually uh, quite a bit brighter than, than you'd get the impression from this video. So uh, I've been using it at 200 today. What that allows me to do is to spend my time framing up the shot. Now, of course, I'm not putting it on a tripod. I spot a splash of light on the flank of a mountain across a valley. Um, what I am looking to do, though, is the time that I've got with that light available to me is to frame the shot up as best I can so that at least I've got something I can use uh, to make a half decent and interesting photograph. And while I'm doing that, let me just just take this down. So we're now down at a thousandth of a second. And you saw there that I'm using a fast burst and it took three exposures. And that's because I've also got my bracketing switched on and that takes it at one stop over and under. And what I'm after here is that really imposing flank of Trevan. Do you know what? I might just have pulled it off. Uh, there's a big lump of cloud just coming across in front of it. Yeah. 
and it's gone. So that's how quick. I mean, I, you know, I didn't stage that. I promise you, I'll show you that image, whether it's any good or not. Um, but that's how quick you've got to react. It's now back in cloud. There's nothing to see. I was looking to get a shot of the Castle of the Winds on uh, Glidevach summit and also across at the Snowdon Horseshoe. I can see the lower flanks of uh, Kribgorch from here, uh, but no sign of Snowdon or a clear way at all. What a fabulous day though, really enjoying myself. So I think I'm gonna head on back down now. Uh, there might be some photography along the way, but I'll check in with you later and let you know how I got on. Since I last spoke to you a couple of hours ago, I was only about 15 minutes off the summit and the heavens opened and I'm absolutely drenched. So I wasn't able to easily stop and talk to you on the way down because uh, this little mini video camera isn't at all weather sealed. Uh, nevertheless, I still managed to grab one or two images. So I'm hopeful that there will be something to put up for the, the gallery at the end of this video. Just a couple of tips for you if you're planning to park up in Kapalkirig uh, and head up that route. Do be careful, uh, the, there is a path marked on the map, uh, but it is kind of indistinct in places, quite difficult to follow. Now, in good conditions, that's not a problem, but when the clouds are low and you can barely see anything, it's really easy to wander off the route. So uh, do be careful of that or practice your orienteering skills. Um, uh, the other thing is make sure your boots are really waterproof because there are lots of wide boggy uh, peat upland areas uh, and you really have to sort of wade through those. There isn't uh, any way to get around them without uh, adding a couple of miles to your hike. So with those tips in mind, I hope you've enjoyed this little trip out. Sadly, not as much photography as I would have liked, but I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it too. And if you have, why not subscribe now? Join me next time. Cheers. Yeah.